Which brings us, by the way, to uh, Madison Square Garden last night, where CM Punk did have his first match in WWE in a decade. And uh, unsurprisingly, he beat old Dominic Mysterio with the GTS and cut a promo afterwards, which we're going to talk about here in a moment. But uh, the rest of the show had Becky Lynch beating Zoe Stark, Kofi beat Ludwig Kaiser, Katana Chance and Caden Carter retained their titles over Chelsea and Piper, which was a WWE women's tag title match. Omos is still around. He beat R-Truth, squashed him. MVP said he would pay R-Truth money if he could knock Omos off of his feet and Truth could not. So I love it. it. You got to pay a ticket. You got to buy to see Omos. He's not going to be on your TV screen. You got to come out to the, the locals to see Omos. Rhea beat Shayna and Ivy Nile in a three-way to retain the title. Finn Balor and Damian Priest beat Sami Zayn and Jey Uso for the tag team titles. So Sami Zayn back in action is noted yesterday. He was taking some time off, but he's back for, uh, I think, five shows. CM Punk beat Dominic with a GTS. That was underneath Ricochet beating Bronson Reed. Cody Rhodes beating Shinsuke Nakamura in a bull rope match. And the main event was Seth Rollins beating Drew, no DQ, no count out, to retain the world title. And then he dedicated his win to the memory of Brody Lee and Bray Wyatt. And for those asking, why are we recapping uh, WWE House Show, Who Cares? Well, this was the most successful non-televised WWE show in the history of WWE dating back to 1963. It did uh, absolutely gigantic business, 16,000 people, uh, they drew more money than any other non-televised show ever, and uh, that's pretty big. They're uh, they're on fire right now. So and now look, I head to L.A. For a lot of people, Madison Square Garden still means something. And even though it's not the McMahons of yore who now have the promotion in their hands, to sell out Madison Square Garden, to break records monetarily at Madison Square Garden is still a big deal and it's a great bellwether for them and they're extremely hot right now look they were able to be in baltimore on the same night and have randy orton there and have a whole card there as well too but they treat that show as if it's a big deal and it was a big deal and at the box office it was a gigantic deal and they had cody in a bull rope match the first one they build there since 1978 when his father faced superstar billy graham so cm punk's return they did a really good job building this up and marketing this up and frankly this whole holiday tour i think they've done a good job with and you know they're on the way to boston and detroit i believe it is tonight so we'll see how these continue to go but it, they seem to be doing, again, maintaining the heat that they have leading into Royal Rumble. I can't figure out if people are trying to downplay this or not by saying that they charged a lot of money for tickets. No kidding. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, AEW's the charging The biggest gates of, of all time have all been because they paid a lot of money. Yeah. And now tickets. more than ever, That's you're the paying point. More, for, more for any entertainment dollar. But, like, you know, AEW is charging a lot of money for tickets in Canada. They're not selling them. They they spend they look they were a lot of tickets for a lot of big money for all out. Guess what? They sold those. So like it it is a big deal. And right now when it comes to WWE, anybody trying to like you know throw shade at what they're doing live attendance wise, no matter almost no matter where they go, is just being silly. All right, uh, a couple of other notes here, and then we will talk about the NXT show after the break. Goldberg. Does not like Vince McMahon. Called him a piece of S. Very, very unhappy. A sandwich? Well, you know, he's got a lot of things that he's mad about. Vince is like Dana White, he said. He's a big boss. He makes everything happen. But all, all honesty, he gave me the opportunity to put my wife and my son in the front row. Gave me the ability to perform and get in front of them. I owe him everything. Till we went to Saudi Arabia, and he asked me to put Roman Reigns over, and I had COVID. I remember calling from my house here, and I said, listen, here's the deal. I'll do it if you give me a retirement match. So I put myself in a horrible situation to get what I wanted, but to satiate him and to give him what he wanted. Problem is, he never held up his part. So Vince is a horrible person, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, I guess he was promised a retirement match, and 
Well, can he have one and just retire and get out, please? Well, I think that's what the idea of his retirement match would Okay, be. whenever that Israeli thing happens, I wish all the best to him. I think it's awesome. Go ahead with yourself, Bill. You never really liked the business anyway. You were able to get a lot out of it. And frankly, when it gets right down to it, some of the characters you had to deal with and how you came into the business, I get it. You didn't respect it. I know that. That's great. You've juiced enough out of it. I don't care about your retirement. I think there's a lot of people who don't care. Let's just hurry up, get this out of the way, and then you can go be happy doing what you're doing, doing acting, and doing all the great philanthropy that you do for other people. Go ahead and do that. This guy says he hopes the henchmen tonight are the kingdom, and then they all come down with the wheelchair and the neck brace in their henchman outfits, and then claim it's not them. Problem is, it's not going to happen. And also... Why would you claim it's not you if you won the tag team titles? I guess it's possible they won't win the tag team oh, titles. God, this is just drawing on forever. Taven Bennett should be the ROH World Tag Team Champions. I mean, that should be the case. And I would assume in no matter what happens here, they will end up being part of this henchman's army. But, oh my God, I hope they have something great for the reveal at the end because this is feeling like some later portion of the NWO meeting the Black Scorpion. And for those kids out there who don't remember the Black Scorpion, don't go back and look it up because it wasn't very good. But you know what it was from? It was from the 90s, WCW, which Tony Khan loves to look back on and pull from. So beware. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Man, the Brian Vinny Show last night. Check it out. Subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com or Video.F4WOnline.com. We reviewed the Christmas Cage match where uh, Kiri Von Eric got the door slammed on his head. And we were thinking about continuing to review World Class for another month because apparently it gets hot after that angle I hear. Yeah. But then this person here notes, for what it's worth, the main event of the next World Class episode is Andre the Giant, Bugsy McGraw, and Kiri Von Eric. Yeah. Versus Terry Gordy, King Kong Bundy, and Bill Irwin. <laughs> Wild Bill. Huh. With General Skandar Akbar, baby. How about that? Watch it. Look, those aren't... It would be entertaining even with that combination, and I am not a Bugsy McGraw fan at all, especially during that time, but the promos that you'll get during the show and all that other stuff, I have a feeling that it will be worth it. If the people, if the listeners are interested in listening to it, I guarantee well, we'll, you'll get entertainment value out of it. Well, I like to put things in the listeners' hands, except for this this desire to bring back Rob. We'll what see. is that about? We'll see. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.